Okay, if you go to Link or Haltech ECU, uh, one thing I found it difficult to find information on was adding the additional sensors via the expansion loom. So with my WRX plug-in, it came with an air temp sensor wired up and uh, a three bar map sensor. And those two replace the airflow meter. So you get better tuning and because it's a three bar max sensor, uh, sorry, three bar map sensor, you can run a lot higher boost than say the factory two bar. Now, this is, these are the sensors that I'm going to run. So we've got Mac valve for boost control, which is there, three port, uh, air temperature sensor, three port, this is a GM map sensor. Uh, I'm gonna do fuel pressure. That's what I've got on my Cresta. Uh, and then we're gonna do flex fuel. And then this is a combination oil and water temperature sensor, which is already on the engine. I'll show you how they had the air temp sensor wired up originally. So uh, the map sensor is running off the factory wiring. I just chopped it off and repinned it for this uh, connector. And then this is, so this here, it's too hard to hold a torch and do this. So this here is the air temp sensor lead. And that's going down there into, into the cabin of the car. So if you're not familiar with how Link does theirs, here's the Link plug-in ECU. And right up the back here, there are, I don't know whether you can see it, there are two little headers. So this one's got a flying loom plugged in and then the other one is just there. So you can buy this flying loom lead from Link, and it just comes with some, I think the wires are longer than this, but you can see here that they've used the yellow and the green, and they've actually put some heat shrink here, and then it's become a black and a white wire. That's the air temperature sensor. So there's the headers up there. So what I'm doing with mine, instead of buying one of those flying leads, I actually worked out what type of headers Link uses. So I bought, <coughs> excuse me, I bought four of them in case I muck it up. Um, there is the part number just there, 455-2154-ND. Uh, these came from Mauser, I think, no, RST. Uh, no, I can't quite remember, but just Google that part number and it's connector XA housing B blah, 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 blah. And then these are the pins come on a little ream like that. There's the part number there, 455-2051-1-ND. Uh, connection socket 20 to 24, uh, wire gauge crimp. Uh, JST Sales, America. That's probably where I got them from. So those are those. And what I'm going to do, I've got all the wiring here. So this is... Uh, 20 gauge TXL wire. So it's proper like mil spec wire. I got this from NRT Automotive in Australia. Um, here's some other stuff. This is Tefcel. 
wire. It's really, really good quality. Um, this stuff's a bit bigger. So this is what I use. This is what's left over from doing my fuel pump relay. Um, but this stuff here, you can crimp it on these little tiny terminals and it's going to be, you know, strong and sturdy and not come apart. So how do we crimp these terminals? Well, I'm glad you asked. These are the crimpers that I was recommended and I have used them to crimp, to test crimp some of these. Uh, so they're an engineering, uh, where's the model number? PA09. Uh, so for these micro terminals, these are what you need. Um, so how did I work out what to do? So I laid out all my sensors and then for every sensor you get these little cards uh, or you can look it up online. So this one here is the fuel pressure sensor. It needs a ground, a five volt and then the signal. So what we've got here is the drawing I made and I'll just refer back to, so this is the manual for link four plug-in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, tells you about additional sensors, but what it's got here is, uh, these are those two connectors on the motherboard. So the IAT sensor was temp three and ground. So what I did was I got all my sensors uh, and I wrote out the two, so these two are just here. And then I put in my IAT sensor, so it needed a sensor ground, which was there, and then it's gone to temp three. So that's the IAT, which is that one. Boost control, we're gonna wire to the existing factory wiring, so we don't need to put that on this list. Map sensor is to the factory wiring, so we don't need to put this on this list for the expansion connector. So then we're left with fuel pressure, flex fuel sensor, and the combination oil pressure sensor. So I've written them down here, flex, fuel pressure, oil pressure and temp. And if we have a look closely here, so a flex fuel sensor needs a ground, uh, a 12 volt signal, so you just get that from a switched ignition 12 volt. And then uh, it goes to a digital input on the expansion connector. So I, I matched that up to DI5. And you can see here the ground, I've teed it into this sensor ground. Um, and if you actually have a look, I managed to get all these sensors that I'm using all uh, attached to that one expansion connector. So one of these. Um, so fuel pressure, fuel pressure needs a five volt, a ground and a pressure signal. So five volt, uh, you have a five volt signal here. So that's coming off to the sensor. The ground is teed into the sensor ground that we're using for IAT and all of them. And then the pressure signal, um, it gives off an analog voltage. So most sensors, um, apart from temperature sensors, are an analog voltage, and then switches are what uh, the digital input is. Um, a temperature sensor is the same as an analog voltage, but it has uh, built into the ECU what is called a pull-up resistor, now you can use an AN volt, AN volt uh, as a temperature sensor. You just need to add an external 100K resistor as a pull up. Um, don't ask me what that does. It has something to do with the way it, it uh, reads the signal or whatever. So anyway, fuel pressure. And then we've got the combination uh, oil pressure and temperature sensor. So that sensor does both pressure and temperature. Um, it The connector it uses have these little tiny, uh, 
yeah, these, these are also very tiny terminals, so I presume you can probably use this. Uh, but anyway, so having a look at it, we've got the temperature signal, ground, 5 volt, and then the pressure signal, and then one uh, pin on the connector does nothing. So again, I just mapped them. So the temperature signal, I went to temp 4, because that was still free on that header. And then the pressure signal is going to analog voltage 6. And then the 5 volt is teed into this 5 volt um, just here, same as the fuel pressure sensor. Um, so that's that, really. Um, oh, one thing. So, like, the MAC valve comes with, you know, a length of wire. You could just do dodgy spade terminals or whatever. Um, I chose to use a uh, Deutsch connector. Um, so these are really, really reliable, especially like proper actual Deutsch brand ones. You can get Chinese ones of these that are absolutely terrible. Uh, I presume these are uh, um, proper ones. Um, but it was like $9 Australian for that connector. So it's not like it's, it's mega bucks. Um, so I think that's it. Um, so yeah, instead of, you can buy these headers with the loom in it, and then you just cut it to length and crimp on your sensor plugs, etc. But yeah, I chose to make up my own my own one here, uh, and it'll be super strong. This here, which is all the wires are required. So what I did then do is I color coded them. Uh, and I, so I wrote down what colors I was gonna make each one of them. Um, kind of just guessed the lengths. And then there's some sheathing and some uh, Raychem, uh, some of this stuff, heat shrink that has like glue in it. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, so that's how you wire up your sensors. Uh, if this was helpful, leave me a like. And uh, thanks for watching.